Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the amp in the jar that we made uh, last time with the keycad videos. Um, I finally got it done, worked on it for a couple days, parts finally came in, did some soldering and it turned out pretty good. Maybe it'll focus on that, maybe not. Um, but uh, you have an input and output, headphone jacks and then on off switch and the volume control. And what I wanted to do was take a look at the schematic and talk about how the amplifier actually works and go over some of the components and maybe if you uh, want to take a look at it you can modify the design and do some stuff uh, for yourself so let's take a look so the first component over here to the left is just the battery uh, we don't have to worry about much about that but just know that the battery uh, is a uh, DC voltage source so um, we're going to be getting direct current out of this battery and powering up our LM386 over here the next component that we want to take a look at is the first capacitor here, this 10 microfarad capacitor. And this is a decoupling capacitor. Now what a decoupling capacitor does is it's going to take and pretty much clean up your power rails. On the positive and negative uh, rails of your circuit or the positive and negative lines of your circuit, uh, you want to make sure that you have a very clean lines there. In other words, if you have fluorescent lights nearby or you're powering your circuit, off of a power source that plugs into the wall. Sometimes you can get some trash on the line, some interference. And what this capacitor is going to do is it's going to take care of that interference um, by shorting it to ground. And we can see the capacitor is connected to ground right here. Now, the thing about a capacitor is it does two things. Uh, one, it blocks DC voltage. So this DC voltage from the battery over here is going to go up and it's not going to go to ground because this capacitor will be blocking it. It's going to travel on its way. Uh, the other thing that a capacitor does do though is AC voltage, uh, that interference that might be in the form of some kind of waveform, it'll short that to ground. So if there's any of this AC voltage on the line, it'll take it and just short it straight to ground so we don't have to worry about it. So that's what our decoupling capacitor does and just about for every circuit I've ever built, I've always done this. I've always put these in. So a funny story, when I was in college uh, they taught us a lot about math and a lot about theory, but when it came to actual practical practice, uh, there were some issues. For instance, um, when we got to the labs and had to put stuff together, no one was really there to guide us. So when it said drop a decoupling capacitor in, we didn't realize that these things are polarity sensitive if you're using an electrolytic capacitor. So I got to see a lot of electrolytic fluid in the first three weeks of uh, the labs that I had uh, when I was in school. So just be careful when you put these in. I don't put them in backwards. You'll notice that one side of the electrolytic capacitor has a band on it or has a shorter leg. That's usually the negative side. The longer leg is the positive. Um, so um, when you're putting these in between the rails and ground, you put them in backwards, you, you may get a little bit of a, a show. It's kind of cool to do it once or twice, but you're, you'll just blow them up and waste them. So, All right, so the second thing we want to look at is down here is this potentiometer. You'll see that the audio that we have coming into our headphone amplifier uh, comes from here and this audio is going to come in and then feed into this LM386. This potentiometer is being used as a volume control. What happens is audio is coming in here. This audio is a voltage so we're going to say this voltage is VS and this audio comes in to the potentiometer and the potentiometer is nothing more than a voltage divider. So if both of these resistors were equal and you were to take and you were to listen into this audio right here in the center what you would hear is half the original audio that came through because it would split the voltage directly in half. Now what we've done is we've taken this voltage and we've uh, split it off and we bring it into our, our amplifier, our LM386. Now the way that we're able to control the volume or I should say control the size of the signal coming in is with this potentiometer and with this voltage divider type of action. Now remember all of this, all of this is housed inside of that potentiometer. And what happens is when we turn the knob one way, uh, let's say if the knobs, well let's go back, let's say this knob is directly in the center. If it's directly in the center what we would hear on this line is half of the original voltage. However, let's say we turn the knob extremely one direction and this resistance got really, really high and this resistance got really, really low. If we did that, the voltage drop between here and ground uh, would be very, very small. So on this line, what we'd hear is we'd hear barely anything at all because we would make this signal really, really tiny. If you wanted to do the math, you could. If this is R2 and this is R1, all you would do is take Vs 
times R2 over R1 plus R2. And that's going to give you the voltage out on that line, or the voltage going into the amp. Or vamp, that looks funny. Now if we did it the other way, if we turn the knob the other direction, and made R1 go down, and R2 go up, then what would happen is we'd have, an, have a huge voltage drop across R2, using the same formula here, and we would find out that V amp, or the, the voltage going to amplifier, would be a lot greater. In fact, we would see a lot of the original voltage, or most of it, going into the amplifier. And so our, our uh, volume, or our, our input signal, would be really big. So when it goes in here and gets amplified, it, you get a really large signal coming out the other side of it. And so that's how this potentiometer works. It's just inside of it, as you have kind of these two resistors, and what's happening is you're increasing the size of one and decreasing the size of the other. Um, and you have this little voltage divider action actually controlling the size of the signal up here. The next thing we want to look at is the amplifier itself. This amplifier is an audio amplifier and it's set up uh, fairly simple, the LM386. Uh, the data sheet um, I'll uh, link below in the comments. So let's go through what each pin does and, and uh, why we have it set up the way we do. Pin 6 is just to feed the chip voltage. So power comes in, 9 volts comes in, feeds into 6, and of course if you feed power in, you need to have a ground pin, and that's going to be pin 4 down here. So those are pretty simple. You have to have a couple of, of pins to feed your audio in on, and that's going to be on pins 2 and 3, so that's fairly simple. Uh, pin 7 we'll get to in a moment, but pins 1 and 8 is what I want to focus on right now. Pins 1 and 8 control the gain of the LM386. If you do not put any component between pins 1 and 8, what you will have is a chip that will give you a gain of 20 decibels. So that gain is fixed, it does not move, uh, you get 20 decibels regardless. If I take and put a 10 microfarad capacitor in here, it will bypass an internal resistor that sets the gain on the LM386 and instead of giving you a gain of 20, it's going to give you a gain of 200 dB. Now if you want a value somewhere in between 20 dB and 200 dB, what you can do is you can combine a resistor and a capacitor and this will give you some value between 20 and 200 decibels. If you really are feeling uh, like you want to customize things, you can make this a potentiometer and adjust the resistance um, and be able to adjust between 20 and 200. So let's pretend you decide to go with a 200 gain amplifier or really any amplification that is greater than 20 dB. What the data sheet says is that if you do that what you need to do is come down here to pin 7 and you need to add a capacitor of 0.1 microfarad to ground and this is going to allow you to be able to get up to that gain without having any problems with the amplifier. What it really does is it uh, pretty much bypasses this second input. I'm not really sure exactly uh, why that matters as much right now, um, but uh, it this input goes to ground anyway and so it doesn't really matter if it bypasses it, but it's kind of essential in the circuitry of the LM386 that you have this capacitor there in order to get to higher gains. The last thing would be the output, uh, pin 5 here. This is where uh, your product is going to come out and go to, in our case, uh, a headphone jack. Now on the output, uh, we have a couple of things. We're going to get back to this in just a minute. Uh, but what we have is a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor right here. And what we're going to do with this uh, 100 microfarad capacitor is we're using it to once again block DC. If we have any DC that's coming out and might make it to our loudspeaker, we want to block that. And if we decide to hook this LM386 up to something else beside the loudspeaker or headphone jack, then it will keep DC from uh, coming into the circuit as well and causing problems. So that's usually why we just put this uh, large uh, capacitor uh, right here. Finally is this branch uh, that's down here on the bottom. And this took some digging because I had to ask around uh, why this was here. Now the reason I had questions was because I didn't understand why this resistor needed to be here. Why not just take this capacitor and just short it straight to ground and this is a massive ground plane but <laughs> I think you get the idea. Higher frequency say comes out of this output and hits your loudspeaker uh, you should get audio 
But what will occur is because this is an inductor, an inductor uh, starts to increase in impedance the more high frequency signal begins to impinge on it or begins to, to flow through it. And so as the impedance begins to increase, uh, it starts to kind of block these high frequencies. A capacitor, on the other hand, will start to decrease as the frequency gets higher. And so uh, as this thing starts to increase, this frequency begins to increase, then the signal's more likely to go through because the impedance is getting lower and lower. If you do not have this 11 ohm resistor here, that high frequency would go straight to ground. If that high frequency goes straight to ground, then all of a sudden the LM386 thinks that someone has shorted its output straight to ground. And that doesn't do too well. And what you'll find is that it can really cause a bit of an issue with the LM386. It'll start oscillating. It'll start throwing out all sorts of signals all over the place. If you have this 11 ohm resistor, what will happen is as the frequency starts to increase, this capacitor starts to decrease. If this capacitor goes all the way to almost zero impedance, well, it never really shorts to ground because there's always an 11 ohm resistance there to keep it from having a, a direct short to ground. Yeah, so this is kind of common anytime you're trying to drive a loudspeaker is to drop this on the output of your amplifier. So that's how an LM386 amplifier works. Uh, if you have questions, I'd love to hear them. Um, if I didn't explain something too well, uh, please ask a question so I can try to clear up uh, some of the things I might have said. Uh, also, if you like these videos and you want to keep getting them, I've learned that on Facebook about only 20% of you guys actually get these videos because Facebook kind of has a silly distributing system. Uh, if you want to be sure to get all these skinny R&D videos, please go to YouTube and subscribe and you'll make sure that you get uh, every single one of them. Thanks again for watching and see you later. Bye.